is not so much psychologically different as you were trying to define it now, but economically different. He's on the he's on the wave that's moving forward, the wave of innovation. Yeah, the, here's Schumpeter's uh, element coming into it. He's, he's alert. He's got the, here's the Kurt, here's Kirchner's, Kirchner's element coming into it. He isn't just plunking down his money to buy three shares in a very well established company whose greatest uh, timeless growth was 25 years ago. But look, look, you're raising a semantic point. This is not this is not a substantive point. It's a semantic point, by which I don't mean to say it's a bad point, right? But you're saying you want to use the word entrepreneur to describe something else. That's fine. As it turns out, however, in my defense, uh, if you look at the history of the word entrepreneur as it first appeared in in the French, uh, in uh, uh, Richard Cantillon, uh, really the notion of entrepreneurship as judgmental decision making under uncertainty is historically the more accurate term. It means to it's, 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 it's only recently that the word entrepreneur has come to be associated with startups and, and systemic innovation and creativity and the kinds of things that you're describing. Again, it's just a semantic issue. And, and maybe, Joe and I have talked about this before, you know, maybe it would be in our interest purely for expositional purposes to find a different word not to use the word entrepreneur, it's just like you know, the word liberal. Yeah. We classical liberals or libertarians realize we've lost the word liberal to the left. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe the word entrepreneur has, is, is too difficult to get that word back. But again, it's just a semantic point, not a, it's not a theoretical point. Okay, thank you very much.